We're here on Daf Tzadi Beis on the Beis, approximately 15, maybe 20 lines down from the top of the Omer. Omer of Gidol Omer Ra. That's how the line begins. Omer of Gidol, Omer of Chia Bar Yosef, Omer Rav, Yevama Kiduchin Einbar Nesu in Yechba. Now we're talking about a case of a Yevama Lashuk. She did not receive neither Chalitza nor Yibu from the Yavo. And she went ahead and got married to another man. Now the Allah is as follows. According to Rav, the Torah does not recognize that marriage. And Rav derived that, if you recall, from the Pasuk, Lotia Eishas HaMesach Hutzelizar, Havaya, but Rav now goes a step further in the marriage to this man from the Chuk, and it went beyond Havaya, which is a Maisa condition, into the sewer. He already took her into the Chup. And as you know, there are two stages in Jewish marriage. There's Havaya, otherwise known as Kiddushin, otherwise known as Erison, all those are synonymous terms. And he married her with, let's say, Kesef. And he gave her a Tabas, a Reis, a Then he takes her into the Chobah. Yeah, we do it all together at the same time. But back in the day, there was usually a 12-month delay period from Erison till Nesu. What's the status of the marriage of Yavamal Ashuk, according to Rav, If she got married to someone from the Shuk, does she need a get or does she not need a get? Is the condition valid or not? It depends. That's the way the Gemara understands Rav at this point. If it was only condition, so the man from the Shuk gave her Kesef and he said, then she doesn't need a get. That's not a valid marriage. And that's the right from Tia, Havaya Tia. But if he went a step further and he already took her into the chuppah and created the suin, then the suin yeshba. And if the suin yeshba, it means that she's going to need to get. And therefore, she can never marry a Kohen. And furthermore, there's no yibum, at least at this moment in time. The question is. Perhaps after he delivers a get, that Zar Benachutz could be that at that point Yibum could take place. I don't know. So the Gemara asks, I don't get what's going on here. Ikidushin Einba is Nisuin Nami Einba. Well, he doesn't need a get. There's no such thing as Nisuin without Kedushin. Again, this might go against the Gemara in Kedushin Dafhei of Rav Huna who seems to assume that you could have a chuppah before Nisu, before Eris. But, but let's say we don't pass like Rav Huna. We understand that you need Eris first and Nisuin or chuppah second. And what that really means is that Nisuin stands on the shoulders of Kedushin. Kedushin is the beginning of a Kenyan almost in a fledgling state, and it becomes a complete Kenyan with the suin, with Chobah. But how can you talk about a marriage of the suin in a case of the Yavamal Ashuk according to Rav when the Torah says, Lo which means the condition itself is invalid. You can't build the second floor until you have the first floor. Is Ikidushin Einba, Nisuin Nami Einba? Why would she need a get? You more answers, Ema, you know what Rob is talking about? Kidushin Vinisuin Einba. And Rob is, in a sense, telling us that this has to be obvious to you. 
a kiddushin v'nesuin If there's no kiddushin, then there's no nesuin. So don't, Rav is telling us, don't even entertain, you know, sometimes a person should be such a healthy Talmud Chacham that uh, a fakruma svara doesn't even cross his mind. It should never cross your mind, says Rav, that things would change after the suin. If there's no kiddushin and no valid marriage, then there cannot be in the suin. But now the Gemara wants to offer another interpretation of Ra. Ibois Ema, my Nisuin Yeshba. What does Rav mean when he says that although there's no Kedushin, there is Nisuin? His nus. Who can have Hamnuna? The Amr of Hamnuna, Chamerz Yav, which is Nin, so as Surah Liyama. Liyama. So here, of also, we have another example, and we really should keep a scorecard, a list. In a document of all the nafkaminas to Zika, that Zika is like Ishus. Here's another great example of Hamnun. If a woman is waiting for you, for you, meaning her husband died without children, if she has a relationship with another man, And the Yavan himself cannot be Mekayim the midst of Yim. And the reason for that is it's like a case of an Ashes Isha Zinsa who can no law, if she did it deliberately, she can never ever go back to her husband. So now, how do we fit this into the language of Rav? Rav says, Yevama Kedushin Einba, Nesuin Yeshba. Nesuin is going to be meaningful. In what sense? Not in the sense that she's married to this uh, Shuk guy. For sure, according to Rav, there cannot be any marriage. There's no Havaya, many condition, and certainly, if so facto, there's no Nisuin. <laughs> but what does the Nisuin accomplish? It accomplishes an Isur Yibo, as far as the Yavim is concerned. Why? Because Nisuin creates a Znus relationship. Like Soto Labailo, and we cannot allow for any of the achim or for the one single yavam, if there's only one, to be meyadim. So when Rav says, Kiddushin Enba, what he means to say is that she is allowed to have Yibu. She did not do an act of Znus. She's not a Sogra. And then Rav adds, but if it was already after Nisuin, then she had a relationship, an intimate relationship with this other man, Menashub, then the law is that there's no possibility of Yibu. And why not? Because of Rabbi Hamnuna's principle at Zinsa Asura Liyavo.
Now, in my humble opinion, This statement of Evhemuna makes a lot of sense according to Ra. I'm not sure about Shmuel. What do I mean? You remember that Shmuel said that in the case where the Yavama, the Shomer Yavama, went ahead and got married to another man. There's no need for a gift. And we explained yesterday that although Rav derives this from Apostle Osea, but there's a smara behind the Apostle, and that is that. This man, Minashuk, is just marrying a married woman. She's an Asian siege. By virtue of the Zika Sibu, if there's issues, then how could somebody else be Makadish? It's like going in and being Makadish, a married woman. It's meaningless. And the flip side, the corollary to this would be Zinsa Asura al Yivama. That if she had a relationship with another man, she can no longer fall for Yimum to the Yavam because that's like a case of Aishas Isha Zinsa. And why? Because we're recognizing the Zika as an Ishus. And that's why we said that the, the man in Ashuk could not be Makadish, but she's already married, so to speak. But the Chumra side of that is, as, as a consequence, is that it could be an Isra Sot, in the case of the Yavama Chazitz. But now let's take Shmuel. Shmuel says that the marriage to the Shuk is valid. She needs to get. Again, he vacillated because maybe Rav is right, but there's a, definitely a healthy opinion of Shmuel to push for that she needs to get from the shop, which means that he wasn't married, he wasn't marrying a married woman. And therefore, Shmuel would hold that Zika Sivum just generates Isurim. It's a it's a violation of a lot, but it doesn't mean that she's married to anybody. She's married to the other. So it could be, that's what I'm throwing out as a possibility, that Rav Hanuna is accepting the sheet of Rav that there's no Tfisa's Kedushin, and therefore Zinsa is Asura Leoma. But if Rav Hanuna would have accepted Shmuel's opinion, then this is not a, a case of no Sebastian siege. Because Shmuel never accepted the upgrade of Zika to Ishus. And in Shmuel's perspective, Zika just is an Isra The Torah says that she's not allowed to marry anybody else. Not because she's married to someone now, but because of the separate law of Losia Ishus and Meshach Kutzelishza. And just to add one little point and clarify what I'm saying is that according to Rav, the child that would be born from her marriage to the Shuk when she's a Shomer Siyavam would be a Matzah because he holds Havaya and Kedushin Tovsin. If Enkidushin Tovsin be all the Shuk, then the child is a Matzah. I begin to understand Rav Hemduna in that framework. What Rav Hemduna is saying is the child is a Matzah it means that she is a married woman and had a relationship outside of the framework of marriage. And the child of that relationship is a, uh, is a mazit.
Answer of Emunah says she's a surah al bail, meaning on your on on your vote. Eboy Seymo. We all on Kidamarmi Kor. Rav is talking about the fact that she needs a get from the Isha, from the Isha Shu. I'm afraid to read these words. And the Gemara says, the Michlefa, the Isha Shaholcha, Shaholach Bailam Dina Sayyam. So I'm going to suggest that the word michlefa here indicates a zera derabot, a kind of a maris ayin almost. In the eyes of the spectator, her status when she gets married to someone from the Shuk is identical to the status of a woman whose witnesses testify that her husband died. She got married to someone, and then lo and behold, her husband turns up alive and well. And now the question is, does she need to get from the second husband? And I, I, again, I don't know what to call it. I don't want to use a word from the street, you know, a second lover, but a second husband. Even though there's no marriage. And we learned in the Mishnah that in such a case, she needs a get from her other husband. In this case of Yavam Shuk, we're going to treat her like the case of a woman who's married. She got married to someone else. Her husband shows up alive and well. She needs a get from that someone else. And here too, the Ishmael Ashuk will have to deliver her again. Because again, it looks like they're living together and they're husband and wife. How could she go out with that again? Hence, the Gemara's language is Michlefa Bidin Isha Shaholach Baila Limdina Sayyam. She got married based on the testimony of Lama Zogan of one age. She was a Shogega. She didn't do this deliberately. They didn't allow to get married. They gave a license. She got remarried. And her husband shows up alive and, and well. And she needs a get from both her first husband and this person she's been living with. So she got married relying on the testimony. Her husband turns out to be alive. And the law is she needs a get. If in our case of a woman who needs even more chalitza, she's a Shomer Siyom, and she got married to someone from the Shukah, you're going to tell me he doesn't have to divorce her, then the people are going to say that even in the case of Holach Bailam Din Sayam, in event that that person that she married did not deliver a get, we're going to say she feels a below get. It's not a valid marriage. Her husband is still alive. She doesn't need a get. And we're going to compare it to our case of Yavam Shuk who got married to someone else from the show. And people think she's mad. Is she married? Going to Rav? Absolutely not. Will she have to get a get from him? Yes. And why? 
for the same reason that in Isha Shaholach, Bailam Dinasayam, Vehidro Levinisses, Uba Bailo, she needs to get from that person that married her. So to hear when she got married, she gets married as the Yavavol Ashuk, to someone in Ashuk, she needs to get, even though on a derisive level she does not. So let's just review these two possible ways of interpreting Rav. I mean, the first way of interpreting Rav, before we get to these two ways, is that Rav was just asking Yedushin Unesuin, I mean, isn't it obvious? There's no way of saying that there's no Kedushin to the, to the Shuk, and yet there is Nesuin, and Nesuin is an extension of Kedushin. But now we have two major schools of thought to interpret Ra. What did he mean? One school of thought is based on Rav Hamnuna, and that is that Rav wanted to say she's guilty of znus under her husband, and she can never fall for Yibu. Meaning, it will not be a possibility of Yibu because of the Easter Sota in the case of an Asian Sishu with Bazana Takaspar. And the other approach is that although Rav would not require a get from the Shuk in a case of Erison, he does require a get from the Shuk in a case of Suin because he's worried this situation in the way the framework seems identical to the case of an Isha Shalcha Baila with Medina Sayyam. And then we find out after she got married that her husband is still alive. And we require to get even from this second uh, husband. We had a chabur in the yeshiva, and there's a loch that if there's any debate about a halachic issue, we have to take a vote. And we stood up and we took a vote. That's called nimnu. And once we take a vote, then we know where the mute is defined, the minority. And that minority no longer plays a role in halacha. Of course, the Torah says, Akri Rabin Lahatos. And we paskin like Rav that ain't kidu shitosu be vama, lo siya eshta mesa chutza, lo teheba havayas kidu No, I don't know why you're dealing with the question of whether we recognize the, and validate the Kedushan to the Shuk when the Mishnah itself addresses this question. Where is this Mishnah? It's in the Sech the Kedushan. And the Mishnah says, Hamakadish Isha, if a man marries a woman in a way that her Kedushan
So here's the case. A guy says to a Jewish woman, I'm giving you Kedushin, and they, they should be valid and be chal after my gerus. Or, alternatively, he speaks to a non-Jewish woman, this Kedushin will be valid, it will take hold after your gerus. Now we have a third case. Ebed Knani says to Yisrael, says, let this be your case of Kedushin after I get a shikhur from my master, and then I'm a full-fledged Jew. Wow, this is wild. A man gives Kedusha to a married woman and stipulates that the Kedusha should be valid, should be how after her husband dies. Write literature on this. Now here's another case. A man is married to Rachel. And he says to Leah, her sister, marry me and the wet and the issues will be how the Thomas said, after my wife will die. He didn't want to call her his wife. It's not nice to say after your wife dies. He said, after your sister will die. <laughs> oh, a Israel who's from the Shuk. Says to Yavama before she got Halitza Yibum, Liachar she yachlots lech Yivimech, Yivamech. After the Halitza, this Kedushim will be valid. In all the above cases, it says in the Mishnah Kedushim, Eino Mekudesh. It's not a valid Kedushim. Kedushim to be valid has to be valid at the time of the Kedushim. Otherwise, we get into a violation of what's called enondum kone darashalobaliolam. You can't buy something that doesn't exist. Now, on this list of ineffective kedushin, we have the case of Yavama, where he's makadish the Yavama, liacha shetachel. We see from this Mishnah, therefore, that there's no thesis Kedushin in the Yavama. What's common to all these cases is that at this moment, there's no thesis Kedushin. Same thing apparently applies to a Yavama. You, there's no Kedushin to Yavama. The Eina Kedushin Ruim Lach, the Shas Kedushin. So let's just again summarize Rabbi Yanni's, uh, shall I say, his clarification of Rav, meaning proving Rav's Shita that ain't Kedusha Tosa the Yavama, because in all these cases, a man marries a woman where it's no possibility of Jesus Kedusha, stipulating that later on the Kedusha will be valid. And we're looking at this list. And what's common, the lowest common denominator to all these enumerated cases in the Mishnah is that right now the Kedusha cannot be valid. And on the list is the case of Yavam Ashok. This is clear-cut evidence that Rav is correct, that with regard to Yavam Ashok, there is no possibility of Kedusha. So therefore he marries her with a condition that the marriage will be, chal, will be validated after she gets Chalitza. But before she gets Chalitza, apparently the marriage is not valid. And that's exactly Rav Shiva. Amalei, Sir Amyani says that you're right. 
There's no question that that mission will support Rav. However, Rabiani still wants to take credit. He says that, you know what? If not for me, you would not have interpreted this Mishnah correctly. He says it in a Moshe. He loved it to lie, lo chaspa, mi mishkachas marganisa, to say. Ruven lifts up a piece of pottery that's, you know, almost cemented down into the ground. And Shimon says, look what I found. Underneath the pottery, I found a very precious diamond ring. If not for the fact, says Ruben to Shimon, if not for the fact that I lifted up the cheres, which was almost permanently fixed to the ground, then you, Shimon, would not have found the diamond ring. And what this means is, whenever you see this phrase, this idiomatic phrase in Tana, in Shas, it means that if not for the fact that I revealed the Chiddush, you never would have interpreted this correctly. But rather, you would have explained the mission in a different way, that Kevan the She'ein Biyad HaMakadish Lachlum, So this is a very paradoxical statement. On the one hand, in this misinterpretation, the free Rav Yanai, we would have said that if the Ishmael Ashuk would go ahead and marry her, the marriage would be valid. Why then is this case of Lishayichlots? Why is that mentioned here, enumerated in the list in the Mishnah? And the condition is not how. And the answer is because in halachic terms, he can only marry her after the chalitza is given by one of the brothers. So I can say, I'm marrying you for after a certain period of time, it should be chal, when I can do what has to be done, meaning almanas that I will do something. But here, he's marrying his yavama, I mean, someone else's yavama, I mean, on the condition that after Chalitza of, of the Yavam, it'll be Chal. It's Ein Biyada. It's like a Dovah Shalom You have no control over it. You don't know if and when the Yavam will deliver Chalitza. But all this would only exclude the Kedushan in the case where he stipulated that the Kedusha will be Chal after Chalitza. But if he would go ahead and marry her now, that Kedusha would be valid. Again, that's the misinterpretation of the Mishnah before Rabbi Yane sets the record straight. The Maskana, Rabbi Yane is right. And we're accepting the Sheet of Rav and the Yovam and the Ishmael Ashuk has no power to be Makadisha with a valid Kiddush. And therefore, this case of Lishi Yechlot is exactly equivalent to Lishitizgayer, the Agayer, and what else was there, and Tishtachari, or Yomas Bailev. Because, like all those cases, Rav would insist that in the case of Yavamal Ashuk, the Kiddush is not valid. But Rabbi Yana is telling us that all this is fine and dandy, and this interpretation is correct, but you could have had another interpretation. And you could have misinterpreted it 
to mean that the problem is a different problem. A, a person cannot create a tnai and say, well, this will val you know, this action that I'm in, implementing now will be validated later on if he himself cannot control that which will happen later on. That's called the Dabr Shalom Bolyam. He has no control over the Yavam's decision of Chalitza, if and when he'll implement Chalitza. And therefore, since it's Eino Biyada Makadesh Lachnitz, and therefore the Chalitza's Tluya Bidas Acheru depends upon someone else, is that considered like Kedushin Shalom Bali Olam, and it cannot be Chal. Even though, again, if he would go ahead right now and be Makadesh, the Kedushin would be, would be valid. Okay, then, so this is, uh, if you're with me, this is where we're going we're gonna to end it. We're up to Onole Reish Lakish. Let's just make sure we have a, we have it. How many lines is it? Four. Four lines up from the bottom. Onole Reish That's on Sadi Bays, on Bays, and uh, we're almost at the end. Of Tari Bezam. Hey then, let me wish you a great, a great day.